During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They in no way are a true reflection of the condition or operation of the mine shown in this video production. Many mining accidents are caused in part by inattention to MSHA's workplace examination standard. In this, another in our series of mine safety training videos, we will outline the requirements of this standard and demonstrate compliance techniques. Have a safe training session. Prevention of accidents, injuries, and near misses. We'll all be healthier and do a better job in the mining industry if we accomplish these goals. How do we do this? It's as easy as one, two, three. One, have a good safety attitude and team commitment for safety. Two, identify potential hazards in the workplace. Three, correct all identified hazards. Using the rules and regulations of the Mine Safety and Health Administration, our goal in this video is to have you today learn how to identify all hazards, report hazards at once to the proper person, eliminate hazards preventing injuries or death. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that before you can eliminate a hazard, you must first find and identify it. IMSHA has a standard with rules that spell out what we as miners must do. It's called Examination of Working Places. First, a competent person designated by the mine operator shall examine each working place at least once each shift for conditions which may adversely affect safety or health. The operator shall promptly initiate appropriate action to correct such conditions. Second, a record that such examinations were conducted shall be kept by the operator for a period of one year and shall be made available for review by the secretary or his authorized representative. Third, in addition, conditions that may present an imminent danger which are noted by the person conducting the examination shall be brought to the immediate attention of the operator who shall withdraw all persons from the area except persons referred to in Section 104C of the Federal Mine Safety and Health Act of 1977, persons which are needed to abate the danger. Hazards can be all around us in the processing plant, pit, haul roads, mobile equipment, shops, warehouse, office, almost anywhere. For the purpose of this video, we're going to concentrate on hazards that are most frequently encountered in the mining industry. We'll start out with plant conditions, move to mobile equipment inspections and operation, and end up with pit and ground control. Guards protect workers from exposure to moving machine parts. Serious injury can occur if guards are not in place. Look to see if guards are missing on moving mechanical parts. If coverage of existing guards is not adequate, or if there is no area guarding at all. What is the condition of the guard and is it securely attached? Safe access allows workers to properly move about in a work area without the danger of slipping, falling, or being engulfed by materials. Common problems associated with safe access include climbing over conveyors, climbing onto beams, 
or entering bins or hoppers to access work areas. Hazards in this area would be a lack of fixed ladders to reach elevated areas. No work platform at elevated areas. And not wearing fall protection devices when entering bins or hoppers, or not wearing fall protection as a tanker truck driver on top of a tanker while opening or closing hatches. Use fall protection devices in the appropriate areas, and a man lift if proper access is not otherwise available. Travelways allow miners in elevated areas to move safely about the plant and processing facilities. Hazards with walk and work areas could include handrails that are damaged or missing, handrails that are not the proper height or constructed properly, no tow boards, or buildup of excess materials on the walkways. Also included would be slippery surfaces caused by mud, oily residue, water, or ice. Contributing to hazards can be tools left in walkways. Low headroom. Not cleaning up excess materials and improper openings in walkways. Serious injuries can result from any of these conditions. Walkways and work platforms should be correctly constructed and properly maintained. Electrical energy might be called the heartbeat of the mining industry. It's the force that powers drag lines, processing facilities, and other tools and equipment. If electrical energy is not used safely, it can be deadly. Common hazards with electrical energy are frayed cables, cable strain relief not secured, no bushings and electrical enclosures, open breaker slots and breaker boxes, lack of proper labeling of all breakers and disconnects, missing covers for electrical components, lack of continuity and resistance testing, non-grounded electrical apparatus, electrical tools with frayed cords, and missing ground prongs on extension cords. High voltage areas and electrical substations must be locked, grounded or bonded, and free of vegetation. High voltage signs should be placed around the fenced enclosure. Also, unless you are specifically trained and certified to work in these areas, under no circumstances should you attempt inspection or repair. Conveyors have tragically claimed both life and limb from miners working unsafely in this area. First of all, all energy sources should be locked out, tagged out, and tested to be non-operational before guards are removed and or inspection or repair takes place. When inspecting this area, is the conveyor equipped with either an inside handrail or emergency stop cord system with the cord in good repair? Can the remote startup alarm be heard properly? Warning that the belt is about to start up. Are all guards properly in place? Compressed gas systems used for cutting and welding can be very dangerous in the mining environment if not used properly. Common hazards would be cylinders that are not stored properly. Oxygen and fuel gas, such as acetylene, must be kept 20 feet apart unless separated by a fireproof barrier. Cylinders must be secured so that they will not fall over. Missing caps for the cylinders when not in use are a hazard. Valves that are not turned off when the system is not in use pose a danger. Are the gauges in good operating condition? Acetylene must never be allowed to operate at over 15 PSI. Ask your supervisor about other hazards and safe operating practices with compressed gas. A fire extinguisher that's been used and put back without proper charging is a hazard at the plant. A walkway that's blocked in route to a fire extinguisher is a hazard. Is there adequate lighting in all work areas where lighting is required? Missing no smoking signs, high voltage signs, and other safety signs can be a hazard. 
deteriorated structural steel, foundations, and other plant components are hazardous and should be remedied immediately. In the mining industry, mobile equipment is defined as wheeled, skid-mounted, track-mounted, or rail-mounted equipment capable of moving or being moved. According to MSHA, powered haulage equipment accidents lead the mining industry in the number of fatalities that have occurred. Haul trucks, front-end loaders, excavators, graders, bulldozers, shovels, drag lines and other equipment are vital for the mining industry. Due to their large size, weight and sometimes limited visibility, mobile equipment can be dangerous and deadly. There are MSHA regulations to identify, report and eliminate hazards with mobile equipment. First, self-propelled mobile equipment to be used during a shift shall be inspected by the equipment operator before being placed into operation on that shift. The following general items are to be included. Brakes, both service and parking, shall be capable of stopping and holding the equipment with its typical load on the maximum grade it travels. Warning horns, including forward horns, backup alarms, and travel alarm shall be functioning with a decibel level high enough to be heard in the surrounding work environment. All equipment with an obstructed view to the rear, including service vehicles, shall be equipped with a backup alarm. Headlights and taillights shall be functioning on all such equipment. Window glass shall be free from cracks or defects. Seat belts shall be functional and in use. Fire extinguishers must have an acceptable charge and be properly secured. Poor housekeeping, such as cans, bottles, or trash in the cab, should not be permitted. All guards shall be in place and properly secured. If so equipped, emergency steering on haulage vehicles shall be functioning correctly. Perform the pre-operation check and eliminate defects that can be safety hazards. Second, defects on any equipment, machinery, and tools that affect safety shall be corrected in a timely manner to prevent the creation of hazards to persons. Third, when defects make continued operation hazardous to persons, the defective items, including self-propelled mobile equipment, shall be taken out of service and placed in a designated area posted for that purpose, or a tag or other effective methods of marking the defective items shall be used to prohibit further use until the defects are corrected. Fourth, defects on self-propelled mobile equipment affecting safety, which are not corrected immediately, shall be reported to and recorded by the mine operator. The records shall be kept at the mine or the nearest mine office from the date the defects are recorded. Such records shall be made available for inspection by an authorized representative of the secretary. One final area of hazards and safety need to be covered with the operation of mobile equipment. Equipment travels on roads in the mine, sometimes with steep grades on either edge of the roadway. Berms or guardrails shall be provided and maintained on the banks of the roadways where a drop-off exists of sufficient grade or depth to cause a vehicle to overturn or endanger persons in the equipment. Berms or guardrails shall be at least mid-axle height of the largest self-propelled mobile equipment which usually travels the roadway. Numerous injuries and fatalities can be prevented by having berms and guardrails in place. Numerous other hazards can exist in the mining environment. Look for hazards such as employees working around the water who may drive a vehicle too close to the edge of a settling basin or pond 
running the risk of rollover into the water. Do employees work on dredges or boats without personal flotation devices? Where are high walls that may be unstable with employees working or walking below too close placing themselves in danger? Are all non-qualified personnel clear of blast preparation areas and are only qualified and certified personnel drilling shot holes and inserting explosives? Do personnel attempt to transport vehicles or loads under or too close to overhead power lines? In shop repair areas, are there extension cords in use where there is standing water or that present a tripping hazard? Have tools been left on the floor or in walkways creating slipping and tripping hazards? Are dirty, oily rags lying around that could be ignited and start a fire? The list of potential hazards goes on and on. Any mining operation wants you to identify all hazards, report them at once, and eliminate those hazards so that there will be zero accidents, injuries, near misses, and yes, even zero IMSHA citations. If in spite of all precautions an accident or injury occur, be advised that IMSHA requires that individuals be properly trained in first aid, and that training must be made available to all parties interested. Your Mine Safety and Health Administration District Office will be glad to offer information and assistance on any mine safety subject. With everyone being a member of Teamwork for Safety, Hazard recognition through workplace examination in mining can be accomplished by identifying all hazards, reporting those hazards at once, and eliminating those hazards to prevent injuries and death. There's a lot to be said about failure to perform workplace examinations. Unfortunately, those who have the most to say about it can't say it. During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They in no way are a true reflection of the condition or operation of the mine shown in this video production.